like living in SF because it's just a beautiful city. I think the spots are skated a little less than other areas that a lot of skateboarders occupy, like LA or New York, things like that. It's, it's like an easier place to skate in that sense. I think once coronavirus hit, it kind of just became the only move we could do with making another video because we weren't able to travel as much and lockdown and just a bunch of other factors at that time, we weren't really able to get out and move around like we usually were. So we were just sticking in the same city. I think we were able to skate a lot more spots that we usually weren't able to because of the lockdown and it depends on how you're looking at it, I think. But I think a lot of it was just kind of up to like your own free will, like how often you wanted to go skate during the pandemic, if you wanted to go skate during the pandemic and like just how serious you wanted to treat that. I was just trying to have like a happy medium with all that, go skate a little bit, but try to like be safe, try to mask up and just try to not get in too many uh, social situations around a bunch of people at that time. Did you get any tricks for this that were not in the Bay Area? I stayed in Portland for two weeks at Chris Barcatapane's house and he took me and Dylan Williams around to a bunch of spots that I'd never been to before, which is really rad. Um, we filmed that line with the Nolly Crook and the Nolly Flip board slide on the two handrails in a row in the hallway. And then we got like a ledge line at the Magic Five Plaza. Oh yeah, and then this switch flip over this handrail that was in uh, Tigard, Oregon or something. Those are like the clips that are coming to mind that weren't in SF. Yeah, it felt more natural to be filming a project with Nibs because I skate with him all the time. I consider him like one of my best friends already, so I mean that just it just makes everything easier that way when you're going out skating with friends you enjoy spending time with, you know? That was the first one he locked into, right? <laughs> Skating with Nibs is sick because I feel like he can skate any spot if he really wants to. He kind of likes to take like a new approach with like spots that he's skating and that kind of inspires me to like get out and try something different maybe that I haven't messed with in a while or I don't know. He's got a lot of energy when he skates too so I just try to like feed off of that and keep up with him you know. And he's just like my good homie so it just it's a fun time skating with him. There was a Santa Cruz ad that me and Nibs shared. That ad was pretty cool. It was just like, we got asked to like submit a bunch of photos of like our homies and Henry and stuff like that to kind of like border around the whole thing. So that was, that was pretty cool. I think most of the images were just kind of like things that we had come across or just like funny times or good times like while filming for the video. And just, I think a lot of it was uh, SF based too. And then uh, there was an OJ ad that ended up being the back cover of Thrasher. That was super hyped on that. There's like a back tail on this outledge that Nibs had sent me a photo of um, that I wanted to go peep. And we were kind of in the area and just kind of stumbled on it and ended up getting a uh, Pizzle shot a good photo of it. So I was psyched that that worked out and turned into an ad. Hey, I'm Ron. Popping out perfect, arms are up, the lighting's even. I think the last video part that came out before this was uh, OJ Wheels video part that I filmed. I was pretty psyched on that one. I was, I was pretty proud of it. I'm never like fully satisfied with any video part, I don't think, because there's always like tricks that got away or maybe you're not like 100% happy with how you landed some of the tricks or, I don't know, I'm, I'm like a nutcase with that stuff though. But I was pretty hyped on how that one came about. And it had been a pretty substantial amount of time like in between these two projects. I was dealing with a lot of injuries after I came out that OJ part. I was in physical therapy for tendonitis on my ankle and my patellar tendon and my knee. So I kind of had to step back and take some time to like heal myself before I could like start working on another project. My memory is really shitty and I can't recall like the exact tricks I was trying, but I definitely rolled my ankles, both of them at least like twice while filming for this. And usually when I roll my ankle, I'm out for like two or three weeks. It takes a little bit to get them back into skating shape because they've already been rolled a bunch before that, so they're weak and they take time to get back to their normal self. I feel like a lot of my injuries like come outside of tricks that we were even filming. Just like having a fun day out skating with friends, I get hurt sometimes doing that even, you know? I mean, I, I had to get a catheter put in at one point, like in between filming for this project. I mean, I don't even want to go into like the details of that, but a flat ground trick basically put me into the hospital and I had to have a catheter and that was pretty horrible. Yeah, that took me out for a couple weeks.
I think the remedy and healing part kind of depends on the injury. Um, if I've bruised something or if I've like rolled my ankle, I like using Arnica gel to help with bruising and inflammation. Also with rolled ankles, I mean that's like the majority of my injuries are just rolling my ankles. I try to use like stretch bands to try to get them stronger, get them more flexible. I'd probably go to physical therapy like two or three days a week and just work on building muscle around um, the areas that were injured. Yeah, that spot was actually like down the street from the place I went to physical therapy at. That's like how I found that thing. I ollied it. That like was going all right, but I just like couldn't commit to the switch ollie for a while because I kind of had to like diagonally turn out right as I landed it. So that was just kind of like a mind fuck. But this girl in the apartment across the street from the spot was like filming us. And then, I don't know, basically we were like hyped that she was filming an angle of it because we figured it would look sick from up top. And uh, she ended up filming the one I landed and then I think she airdropped us the clip, so we had it in like good quality and shit, which was cool. So, yeah, that was, I don't know, it was cool. She was like super nice, was down to like film the clip. She actually like stuck it out for a while because I tried it for like at least over an hour. And then, yeah, we, I don't know, we had like a cool like extra angle for that switch Ollie, which was rad. A little citizen filmed clip there. <laughs> oh, dude, I like it. Dude, it's I like it a lot because yeah. you see the spot, you see the whole spot. Yeah. Thanks for filming an angle of that. That was that a good. Really cool. That was a good angle. That yeah. looked good. Thanks. <laughs> <Have a> good <laughs> we did it. That was sick. I guess that is like the second time that happened. Like we were skating another kind of over rail spot in the city somewhere, and uh, it was like right. In, it was in front of somebody's house. It was like a house spot, and this guy had a ring camera, like one of those security cameras, in front of his house. This lady was like kind of kicking us out, who lived in the house in front of the spot and she was super nice. I asked her for like 10 more minutes and told her we wouldn't like damage the rail or anything. She must have talked to the other neighbor who had the ring camera and he messaged me on Instagram with the angle filmed off the ring camera. So that was pretty epic how that turned out. We just got like a weird like security camera angle of that trick. We've had pretty good luck with the random angles recently. Most, most of the tricks that I tried did take a while, probably like upwards of like two hours or more or something. So those are always a battle regardless. It's just like a battle of stamina, trying to like muster up enough energy to like continue trying what you're trying. But I know that Nolly hard flip onto the block at the Union Square, that was like a couple trips back for. Um, that Nolly flip back nose one slide took like a long time too. That was definitely like probably upwards of like three hours or something, right? Yeah, and no, I feel like every trick I try is always like at least a medium sized battle. <laughs> oh no! Zion's sick seems to really like have it together for only being like 12 years old. I was definitely way more of a shithead when I was 12, so he can definitely like hang with the squad, which is cool. And I mean, his skating speaks for itself and it's, I'm excited to like watch him grow into his skating more and he's, he's fun to watch. He's a super nice kid. I think we would just kind of sporadically end up at that Yerba Buena Plaza just throughout filming for this project because it's, it's just a great spot. There's like two levels of spots you can skate there, which is rad. There's the tall level that you can film like ledge lines on. There's like a low ledge that's kind of against like a little thing of water. And then there's like a taller, longer one. And just a bunch of people in the city were skating it at that time. They were grinding and sliding really well. I mean, me and Nib skated that ride on grind. That thing was super rad. It just looks super cool. I really like skating that just tall square block that's right after that stair set. I think that thing just looks super cool to do manual tricks or ledge tricks on. There's a bunch of tall buildings in the background and stuff. You can really tell you're like skating in a cool looking city at that spot, which I like. How did the idea come about to do the line from the top section all the way to the bottom set? I don't know how that idea really came about. I think, I don't know, we were just going to that spot a lot and after seeing people kind of skate it a few times like on Instagram from like the very top to the bottom, I think it'd be cool to try and film like 
a real clip for a video part that way. And I always thought like long lines with a bunch of flip tricks and ledge tricks have always looked cool. And I don't think I've like really filmed many lines in my life that were like more than three or four tricks. So I was like sparked that we got that one. I was psyched, yeah. I think it, I think it turned out really well. I was kind of like nervous. I wasn't gonna be very like proud of this part because I was filming it in between a lot of injuries and just, there was just a lot going on at that time between injuries and the pandemic and lockdown and everything. So it's just kind of, I didn't like expect it to turn out as well as I thought it would have, just like from my own personal footage. But I'm, I'm pretty proud of how it all turned out. And I think people seem to be stoked on it. So that keeps me happy and gets me psyched to film for the next project. Um, right now I'm working on a, a little video part at Pier 7 with Brendan Bill and I want to try and film another video part over like the course of the next year for Thrasher. I think with filming a video part, you just got to take it a day at a time. And there's a lot of like highs and lows. I mean, days where you film a trick you're really hyped on, you're going to be on cloud nine and then you could sometimes go three weeks or like a month or two without getting anything because of injury or just just because you haven't, you know? And that's it's just up and down like that and you have to just take it as it comes. I'd say just take your time so you can really be proud of it, you know? Don't try to rush anything too hard. Thanks for checking out this video. Click subscribe to see all the squad. Subscribe. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and don't forget to turn on notifications so you don't miss out on the latest videos. Be a part of this. Subscribe to the Santa Cruz YouTube channel.